What's going on, everybody? So I wanted to do a real world, real world example of what uh, options looks like. So right here on the options, you can see I bought a hundred shares of AMC. I actually forgot all about this thing, and so kind of got a little disappointed. I forgot about it. I uh, threw out an order to capture a hundred shares. If this thing goes to fifty-one dollars a share, and right before the close, I got filled right here on this candle presumably because my order was here it went just a little bit below me not even a full dollar per share and now this thing is recovering um so i saw this starting to happen kind of looked at the chart um let me kind of focus on the chart for a second so i was looking at the chart didn't really feel very confident that this thing was going to make another push now i do actually have a uh, you know a belief that we have a very real chance of getting back to 70. And if we do get back to 70 for a third time, uh, call me crazy, but I think we have an easily, easily gonna hit 100. But uh, with that being said, the option premiums were not that good. And so what happened, um, I ended up selling a covered call. Now going back on the discussion I had is when you are the option premium, when you're the option seller, you get to collect that premium for taking on that risk. Um, but so essentially you do have that defined risk. Um, however, if it does not obey by the strike price, then that profit is yours. So what I mean by that, so I sold what is called a covered call. So I have, um, I sold um, a call contract. Now I have, I purchased 100 shares, which you know, remember a contract is worth 100 shares, the underlying stock. So I have 100 shares and now I sold um, one contract against it. Um, that is at, for me, the strike price for tomorrow, because the end of the week is tomorrow, to go up to 70 is uh, I collected $335 for that to take on that trade. Now, the reason I did that is that's going to lower my, my cost basis. If I um, get assigned on that. That means that this um, price went to 70 or above by tomorrow and closed above it. If that's the case, I have I am set to make around $2,400 on that trade for 100 shares. Need I mind you? I will almost um, that it will be roughly a 50% return on my investment. Now I will take that trade. Now right now I am you know not really stuck in a winning trade or a losing trade. So what you're seeing right so now. Um, the market is closed after hours, you know, has been very uh, hot lately for these stocks since I started this thing has bounced around $70 a share. Um, but you don't see the option premium changing at all. And that is because those options only run when the con uh, when the market is actually open. So you're not going to see this red line change. Now, the reason it's red is because the number is getting higher, which is essentially taken away from my profit. Had I waited, I could have got another $8. Uh, this minus one means that I sold it. If I had one, that means I bought the contract. Minus one <clears throat> or minus whatever number means that I'm the seller of that contract. So this right here, I collected that fee, 330 or not 350, $332.50. Uh, cents. So you gotta multiply that by 100. I collected that fee, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, so here's my price. So right now, I'm kind of making money, I'm kind of not. I actually have no idea if I could even close this right now because these two are effectively linked right now. Um, I don't even know if I could sell these shares or without triggering something to go on here because I don't have uh, the ability to buy or sell. Uh, I don't have the ability to sell uh, naked calls or naked puts. And so what that means is, is that I have to have a covered call. So in order for me to sell a call, I actually have to own um, enough shares of that underlying stock to make that sale. So for instance, with me, so right now you're seeing the price is dropping, which is uh, really sad because you're seeing kind of my P&L drop quickly, but the price is dropping. So we'll see if this thing doesn't, uh, if I end up losing money on the trade, then I end up losing money on the trade, but it is a nice real world example that we can kind of take a look at. We'll see how tomorrow uh, plays out. Now, with that being said, um, now I have 100 shares, I had to have at least 100. Now if I had 200 shares, I could have sold two contracts. Don't have to sell two, you could sell one at a time, so on and so forth. Um, so I sold uh, one covered call, collected that premium on there. Now the way this works, so I sold it at a strike price of 70, expiring tomorrow. 
So what that means is, is that if this price gets to be above, so now we're about to go negative because the price is dropping even below my cost basis of um, $51 a share. Kind of look right there, you can kind of see. So I'm, I'm gonna be in the negative very quickly. So <clears throat> what's, uh, what happens here is if the price tomorrow, by the end of tomorrow, ends up closing above $70 per share, let's say it closes at $80 per share, then I am going to give up my shares to whoever bought this contract at $70. So if it closes at $72, then I'm gonna take a loss on those $2. Essentially, I don't get to keep those profits. Those profits are gonna to go to that other individual. If this thing closes at $100, then I'm going to you know, keep the profits from 51 to 70. Those are mine. And then from 70 on, those profits are the person who bought that contract. That is the kind of the trade-off, the name of the game. Now, the difference being is that with tomorrow coming up in expiry, um, if this thing closes at, let's say, $69.40, it does not break the strike price. That person cannot exercise that. Op well, technically, they could exercise the option. It wouldn't really make sense to them, um, in which case... Um, I would lose those shares, but typically nobody's going to exercise it unless they're in the money or have a very, very sneaky suspicion that the following day there is going to be a massive, a massive move in their favor. So right now, kind of expecting this to kind of go up and down all throughout the night. I am going to shut down the broker so that I don't get, you know, too concerned or overly annoyed with this. Um, you know, I very well may open this up tomorrow and find it to be a substantially losing trade. We will find out. I uh, don't really like holding things overnight, but I'm fairly confident that um, I will you know, manage the trade as best as possible. I don't like holding things overnight for this reason. I don't like having that unknown. Um, but for those who have been holding overnight for weeks, they've likely been paid off very nicely. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I guess, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Uh, calculator. So here we go. Um, just to kind of give you a, an idea. So let's see, 70 is that strike price. So I would be selling my shares at 70. I bought those shares at 51. So I have 19. So I have a $1,900 gain because remember we have to multiply that by 100 shares. So I have a $1,900 gain. Plus I'm going to add the money I would I got from the contract itself which is no right there and so that is how much money i have that is my max profit potential if that occurs tomorrow to be honest with you i would love nothing more than for this thing to close at 71 dollars and 10 cents tomorrow that means that there's no guarantee i'll get assigned and um, I'll basically maximize that profit. So that is my maximum profit potential. Now, theoretically, my loss potential is, um, you know, this underlying asset right here. To say I wake up tomorrow and this thing is valued at zero dollars uh, minus what I did collect. So this is mine to keep. Uh, I can do whatever I want with it. That is exactly mine. We are having a tremendous amount of sellers right here at that fifty-one dollar mark. So, like I said, I'm going to power this thing down so I don't get a uh, you know, too annoyed, I'm not gonna do anything I don't even think I can right now, but I am gonna power it down. So we'll open this up tomorrow and see where we're at.